Hey, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Mike Juno and my son Michael here, and uh, we're from uh, and we're in uh, Denham Springs, Louisiana, which is a small community right outside of Baton Rouge. Uh, and welcome to South Louisiana. Uh, so Chef uh, Celeste, who's a good friend of ours, asked us to show y'all how we cook a traditional cochon de lait, which is a roast pig, basically. And it's the way that we cook it here in Cajun country, which is slightly different than probably you've seen roast pigs in Hawaii and other parts of the country. They, they, they cook it slightly different than what we do. Uh, but what you're gonna see today is how we cook a roast pig. Now, a roast pig, or a cochon de lait, cochon de lait means sucking hog in French, sucking pig. Is, is kind of like the veal of, of uh, pork. It's a milk-fed uh, uh, pig, uh, just like uh, veal is in, in, in cattle. And uh, it, what we're gonna cook this morning is about a 35-pound hog. Uh, it's been cleaned, and it's a traditional meal that is very traditional for the Cajuns from the part of Louisiana that I'm from, which is, we're from uh, central Louisiana, uh, a little town by the name of Bartlonville and Vols Parish. Uh, which is kind of central Louisiana, which is north of Baton Rouge, where we're at right now. The typical cochon de lait was a very, very traditional meal, normally for Thanksgivings and Christmases and, and most uh, holidays, people in my part of the country would cook hogs. That was a, a very common uh, uh, meal. And tonight, we're gonna do the traditional dishes that go with the roast pig that we used to do uh, uh, very traditionally back when I was a kid. Can you explain when you were a kid why the community would come together and roast the pig? Was it because of you know, you couldn't refrigerate it or you know, you had bigger pigs and y'all would share well, it? I mean, well, I mean, just the pigs. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, my dad raised hogs because we were raised on a farm in Louisiana. You're really getting getting a little the, off the, the cochon de lait mixed up with, yeah. with, with, with a typical boucher. A boucher oh, okay. The boucher okay. is when we cook a bigger hog and you make cracklings and all that other stuff that goes with it. Right. And so it's a different, it's a different right. scenario. Right. Okay. What Michael's referring to is, is that uh, about once a month we would cook a hog I and mean, we would have a boucher eat. It was a big, a big pig, a two, two, three hundred pound hog. We'd kill one about once a month. The other families would come over to your house now, in my day, we always had refrigeration, so it wasn't a problem, but, but like in my grandfather's day, before they had refrigeration, okay, they would have to kill uh, 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 animals regularly because they couldn't store it, okay? So the tradition was when you'd kill a hog, everybody would come over, you would kill a bigger hog, the other families in the community would come over, and uh, you'd butcher the hog, and this is a big hog now, okay? And from the hog, they would skin it, and once you skin it, they cut it up and make what they call cracklings. And you put it in a big pot, big huge, maybe I can show you all a, a typical crackling pot that you, put, uh, that you put it in. And really what they were doing when they were taking the skin and putting it in the pot to cook, it was rendering the lard because all you cooked with then was hog lard, okay? Now, then they went to Crisco and now they use vegetable oil. But back then it was only hog lard, it was the only thing we ever used uh, when I was a kid. My mother used to have jars of it stacked up. Uh, every time we kill a hog, we kept it a lard. And cracklings, uh, some of you may have heard of cracklings, which is a very popular byproduct. Now they sell cracklings. All the little local stores around here will sell cracklings. We'll have some tonight. We'll be able to show you all some tonight. And so that was a byproduct. That's what we did it with the skin. Then, then we take the, uh, the meat, we cut it up. Well, first of all, when we kill a hog, okay, as soon as you kill it, you jump on it, and you get a big knife and you and you stick them right here and cut the uh, 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 the artery right here, okay? And you get a pan and you uh, hold the pan under the uh, where the blood is coming out and you catch the blood as it, after you kill the hog. So you you catch the blood, okay? And you just send that into back then the women did certain things and the men did certain things on typical boucher eat. We'd send the blood in, they'd salt it so that it wouldn't coagulate, and then the men would sit there and we'd skin the hog, not skin it, we'd we'd dehair it dehair it and we gut it and then when we gut it okay we catch all the guts and the internal organs which are the you know the liver the spleen the heart and all that stuff you catch all these internal organs in a pan we'd send that into the women okay and then the women would take their they'd clean these guts out and then they would take the heart the liver the spleen they'd grind it all up season it highly season it with onion and celery and garlic and, and all kinds of seasoning uh, cook mix it with rice 
and then they stuff it back in the gut. That's called boudin. That's how we made boudin back in those days. Now, instead of using the guts, they just use casing. The seasoning that, uh, that they use is, is uh, salt, pepper. What else they use? Uh, a lot of red pepper. Garlic. Uh, garlic. Creole garlic seasoning. Very similar stuff. But back in the day, we didn't have the mixtures like that. Like this and Tony's and that kind of stuff. We didn't have that back in those days. So you had to use the individual products. Okay? But very similar to what Chef uh, uh, Celeste has that we're going to season this hog with. Yeah. But you mix that in the, in the boudin. Okay, and then you stuff it back in that gut, okay, and uh, and that was boudin. That's how boudin was originally made. We used to make something called a red boudin. They would take that same mixture, okay, and they would take the blood, mix it with with blood, and they'd stuff it in the, in, in the gut too. The white boudin was the one that didn't have the blood. The red boudin was one that had the blood. Now you can't hardly buy red boudin. Yeah, they don't make anywhere. it anymore. You can't hardly buy it. It's mm -mm. probably some health issues. Now you can't buy it at the store anymore, but you can buy white boudin at almost all the local stores. You can go buy white boudin almost anywhere now. Let's get to seasoning this pig here. Okay, but wait, I hadn't, I hadn't finished oh. yet. Uh, but but what we did with the pig, with a roast pig, when I was a kid. We were in a small town. We had no movie theater. We had no tennis courts. We had no swimming pools. We didn't have anything. So what we would do on a traditional Saturday night when I was a kid, since we all had farms and, and most of the parents raised hogs, they meant that the boys, young boys, we'd get together. We'd go to somebody's house. Everybody, somebody always had a, a, a small pigs, baby pigs. Okay, we'd go to somebody's house. We'd catch the pig. We'd clean it. Okay, and then we'd go to somebody's camp on a typical Saturday night, if, if you weren't working in the field or something, uh, you go to somebody's camp at night and, uh, and we'd cook a hog, okay? The, the boys would get out there, we'd rack the hog, we'd hang it in the fireplace just like we're going to do today, okay? Very traditional thing. Now, we didn't have a fancy fire pit like, we're, <laughs> like we have right here with a rotisserie, okay? We'd go up there and we'd get a tree and just put a couple of tin, pieces of tin to reflect the heat back to the hog put a couple of pieces of tin to reflect the heat, you know, maybe put a bar between the, uh, the trees to hang the hog from, and we'd sit there with a, with a fishing pole or a string to turn the hog so you had to keep continuously to turn it. Now I've got a fireplace that's built, we've got a little rotisserie that turns by itself where we've kind of mechanized and stuff. Mm. Made it a lot easier to cook the hog nowadays, so. But that's what we did on a typical Saturday night. So what we're gonna do is a traditional uh, uh, cochon delay, uh, we're going to go through the whole deal of how we rack it, how we cook it, and then how we cut it up. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's get started, Mike. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what we're going to start out doing is, is we're going to uh, season it, okay? And before we season it, in the thick parts of the hog, okay, we're going to cut some slashes, make sure the seasoning gets in there real good. Okay? And we're going to make sure that this seasoning gets in there real good. That's all we're doing right here. We just cut it so the seasoning, we can get the seasoning in the meat. Okay, now we're gonna season it with uh, 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 pretty traditional stuff, okay? Uh, this is, uh, Chef Celeste has, has this Creole garlic uh, uh, seasoning that she uses. It's mm -hmm. exactly what we used to use when I was a kid, a mixture of, of red peppers and uh, black peppers and, and all kinds of different seasonings that's in this. We need to put it on here. You can't put, you really can't put too much of the stuff on it right now. That's the key. I mean, when you think you have enough, you got to put more. You can't really put too much of it. Okay. Salt. And we're going to put a little salt. We're going to put this uh, garlic. Garlic. Garlic is absolutely key to everything. That's typical Cajun stuff. We're gonna mix garlic in here, get it, really get it in the meat. Then we're gonna rub it all in. Pull we're gonna flip them over, flip them over, Mike. Okay, a little more of this on there. You ready? Flip them over. We're gonna do the same thing on this side. <clears throat> Mm 
just going to season them up real good. Get it, get it in here, Michael. Where? In the arm here. Inside here. You got enough. Don't put too much. Yeah. You can't put too much on it. This gives a little char on it. Okay. Now we got us a seasoned hole. Like I say, you can't put too much at it because it's just the meat's, all, meat's mostly inside anyhow. So. That's the key. When you think you have enough, you got to add more. Okay. Okay, now it's seasoned. Now we're going to rack it. It's fine. It's going to flip back over, Dad. I know that. <laughs> we head down first? Or? It don't matter. It don't matter. Okay. Okay. That's good, huh? Yeah. That'd be good. Okay. Uh, what we've done now is uh, we seasoned it, uh, and now we're going to rack it, get it ready to hang in front of the fireplace. Uh, so this is the rack that, 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 that we built to hang the, uh, hang the hog from. So we're going to go ahead and tie it in the rack and it'll hold it in there while we hang it in front of the fireplace. Okay. Yeah, put that a little too tight on that side. Mm -hmm, that's good. Wait, no, no, I can get underneath it. You can see the fireplace. Let me hang the hog first and I'll explain to you how we used to do it in the old days. Yeah. Yeah, now that we got the hog hung, okay, we're gonna turn the rotisserie on. It slowly, slowly turn the hog and keeps it turning, keeps it from burning. Okay? Is it turning? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's turning. Okay, it'll, it'll turn real slow. Okay, now when I was a kid, okay, we didn't have a fancy fireplace with a, uh, with a rotisserie. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, uh, you know, the boys would go in the woods somewhere and we'd put two pieces of tin against a tree that would reflect the heat just like the chimney does toward, uh, uh, toward the pig to cook it. So we could get by with cooking with nothing more than a couple of pieces of tin and a whole bunch of wood. When you're in the woods to cook, okay, you can just go cut whatever wood you need. Okay, here, here you know, we split it and do it the fancy way now. Okay, uh, uh, now the hog is going to cook. It's going to take about five hours uh, to cook the hog. I think you're all going to come back during diff different stages of, uh, 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 of cooking. And uh, uh, right now it's just a matter of stoking the fire and making sure that it doesn't burn. Now if the rotisserie stops, we'll have to get us a pole like we used to do in the old days. You take, get you a long fishing pole and just poke it, make it turn slowly. Okay, and back in the old days when we do, uh, uh, you'd sit out here for four, a string. For, for four or five hours, you'd sit out here in a chair and you'd just poke that, that, that pig real slow, let it turn real slow and you'd stoke the fire and you'd drink beer and whiskey, okay, and have a good time. That was a typical Saturday night that, that we would do as Cajuns, okay? So that's how you, uh, that's how you, uh, uh, you season them, that's how you rack them. Now we're going to go through the kick, cooking process. It's going to take about five or six hours to do that. Uh, very traditional thing that we do in South Louisiana, the part of Louisiana uh, uh, that, that I'm from, that's the way that we cook uh, uh, roast pigs. Now, let me mention one thing I didn't mention. You notice we always start with the hog head down, okay? And the reason for that, the, the hams are your thicker part, so you want it to cook slower. Now start with the head down. You'll notice the hog is probably gonna be cooked. It's gonna start, it'll get given an hour or so, it'll start dripping the grease that's inside the, uh, the pork. It'll start gripping. It'll start gripping in that pan down there. What that pan? That pan is down there for, so the uh, the fat and the grease don't get all over my uh, my floor. Okay, and uh, when it stops dripping, that means it's probably cooked, and we'll flip it over for about 30 minutes to an hour to finish cooking the hams. Okay.
This looks really good, really good. So, what all did you put on here? Okay, well, uh, you know, when y'all saw, uh, uh, when we originally uh, uh, racked the thing, got it ready, we put some of Celeste's uh, uh, seasoning, mm -hmm. okay, which is a lot of red pepper and- Garlic, garlic black pepper, yeah. you know, yeah. proprietary spices, but all goodness in here. Yeah. So, thank you, but it looks amazing. I'm ready to yeah. dig into it. And then, then we put a lot of garlic in here, is what it is. It's been it's cooked for six hours. Okay. Okay, it's been cooking for six hours. And we're ready to cut it up and eat it. So Let's that's... cut them up and eat them. Okay. All well, right. We're good. Well, then we're going to get, so I got my trusty little knife here. Little knife? That, that, uh, uh, that I use to cut it with. Oh, this okay? is double edged. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we use it at the camp. I clean it up in the shed a little bit, but. <laughs> nice. So. That's how you do it, folks. Yeah. You just cut it up like this, okay? Uh huh. And then we're gonna cut, these are the hams here, okay? We'll cut the hams. And then we'll cut the head off. I'm waiting on a piece of crackling. I'm, I'm gonna pull a piece of crackling off in a minute. Now, now my uh, my parents, when it comes to eating a hog, mm -hmm. this head is the most popular part, okay? It's actually, uh, uh, they, they, they love to eat the brain. Not me, okay. I'll be honest, not me. I'm not okay. a big brain guy. So in a traditional meal, what would what would they have with it? Okay, the traditional meal with uh, with roast pig, and we're gonna have that tonight. We've got a, a, a number of people here. In fact, we've got a bunch of people from New York with us. Yeah. Okay, yeah, a bunch of Yankees from New York are down here to, uh, to enjoy the meal with us tonight. Okay. And and we're gonna, uh, the traditional meal for the Cajuns when we cook a roast pig mm -hmm. is gonna be uh, rice dressing. Mm -hmm. And you wanna tell them what rice dressing is? Rice dressing is, is uh, liver, ground beef, if you would choose to do that, rice, all just mixed in together. That's right. So that's uh, part of the traditional meal. But we're gonna let them see what we do. Cause oh, okay. It's time, I'm, I'm hungry. Okay. And this looks really good. <laughs> I'm ready to eat. I don't know about you. Thank okay. you, Mike. Okay. I appreciate this here. This looks amazing. Folks, thank you for watching. You can check me out on Facebook at Chef Celeste Gill, Instagram at the same, and also on Instagram, Celeste Cooks Too. Thank you. See you next time.